நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In my last video, I had explained about the sign of Libra, the effects of few planets in Libra, intricacies about the debilitation of sun, antidote for the debilitation of the sun, like parivartan of the planets, etc., and different planet conjunctions in Libra. In this video, I'm going to explain about the effects of the rest of the planets in the sign of Libra and much more intricacies of astrology. The planet that I'm going to explain now is Jupiter. If Jupiter resides in the house of Libra, it is not good. What is the reason? Jupiter will be in the 8th house from its own house Pisces. Let me say, from the Sagittarius it will be in the 11th house and from Pisces it will be in the 8th house. Libra is a Chararashi that is a movable sign. A house that is fixed that is Therarashi will be auspicious to Jupiter. In other words, the Guru Valayam is an auspicious house to Jupiter. And Chararashi is inauspicious. When Jupiter resides in the house of Libra, it will be in an uncomfortable state. Because Jupiter does not like Venus. Though Venus is not declared enemy to Jupiter, Still, the Jupiter does not like Venus. As per Bhavat Bhavam, when Jupiter resides in the house of Libra, it will be in the 8th house from its own house Pisces and it will be in the 11th house from its another own house Sagittarius. Therefore, the Jupiter will be in an uncomfortable state when it resides in the house of Libra. The Jupiter that resides in the house of Libra will be in an uncomfortable state, yet it is Subhatva. You have to make predictions based on which house the house of Libra is to the ascendant. Suppose if the native was Pisces ascendant and when Jupiter is in the 8th house, then the 8th house gets Subhatva and Jupiter will aspect the twelfth house to the ascendant by its fifth aspect. Therefore, the native will have opportunities to go abroad and settle abroad or other states depending on the level of Subhatva. Indeed, the ascendant lord being a benefic should not be in the eighth house to the ascendant house. Yet, when Jupiter resides in the eighth house, it makes the eighth house Subhatva and by the fifth aspect, Jupiter makes the twelfth house as well Subhatva. As per this planetary position, during the major planetary period of Jupiter, that is, during Jupiter's Dasha, definitely Jupiter will lead the native to go abroad. This will happen according to their age. If the native was teen, then the native will go abroad for his studies. If he had crossed the teens, then the native will go abroad for working. Therefore, please consider the Subhatva of the Bhava while making the predictions. You have to also consider whether the Ascendant Lord is in the 6th house, 8th house or in the 12th house to the Ascendant house. In general, when Jupiter resides in the house of Libra, it is not auspicious. Sometimes the Jupiter and the Venus will exchange their houses mutually. If there is such a parivartan of Jupiter and Venus, then Jupiter will get the own house status, which is an extra benefit. The planets that got parivartan will do the house effects of the houses to which they are moved. 
in a nutshell when jupiter resides in the house of libra it is not good jupiter will get more subhatva or the house of libra will get subhatva and if the native is pisces ascendant then the eighth house gets subhatva which will lead the native to travel abroad this will happen during the major planetary period or minor planetary period of jupiter that is during jupiter's dasha or antar dasha this is not a house of debilitation for jupiter the libra house is merely inimical to the jupiter since the jupiter is in the 8th house from its own house pisces and in the 11th house from its another own house sagittarius the house of libra is considered to be an inimical house based on the strength of the dispositor of the house of libra which is venus the jupiter will deliver its effects in any case the jupiter should not be in conjunction with saturn or rahu in this house then the jupiter will be totally spoiled the saturn gets exalted in the house of libra therefore when jupiter is in conjunction with saturn then the jupiter will be beaten black and blue by the saturn in addition to this if this is in conjunction with rahu that is if jupiter is in conjunction with rahu then the jupiter will be beaten black and blue by the two malefic planets saturn and rahu therefore the jupiter must not be in conjunction with saturn or rahu in the house of libra please try to make predictions based on the concept of bhavat bhavam and the house lord strength and conjunction let me explain about the effect of the next planet venus in the house of libra venus is in its own house when it resides in the house of libra venus can also attain mul trikon status in the house of libra i have already mentioned in many of my videos that the house that are in lower half of the natural zodiac is where the natural benefics can attain mul trikon and the houses that are in the upper half of the natural zodiac is where the natural malefics will attain the mul trikon this tip is pretty helpful to recall or remember the mul trikon house of the natural benefic and the natural malefic when venus resides in the house of libra in mul trikon it is highly auspicious therefore the venus is the one which lets a person to spend money well jupiter can deliver money to you and save but if you have to spend the money then venus helps it jupiter is a thrifty boy jupiter will not give you much money in a quick way it will spare little by little in a measured way in contrary to this when venus decides to deliver the money it will pour the money when venus is strong in a natal chart the native will spend very lavishly the house of libra represents love because this house that is the libra is the seventh house of the kala purusha if the house of libra is subhatva and if the house of libra is strong and venus is subhatva without any connection of malefics then the person will have great understanding with all women if the person is a male there will be always some women around the native because the house of libra is the seventh house in the natural zodiac the seventh house of the natural zodiac signifies the carnal pleasures and the physical relationships this house is the seventh house of the natural zodiac 
the house represents carnal pleasures and physical relationships and the significator for carnal pleasure is also venus which is the house lord of the sign therefore both the house effect and significance of the planet matches and merges in the libra sign since both the house effect and significance of the pleasure matches in the house of libra when venus alone resides here it is highly auspicious during the major planetary period that is dasha venus delivers great benefits though venus will be a functional malefic let us say for the native of pisces ascendant i will definitely say that the native of pisces ascendant should not undergo the major planetary period of the venus i have mentioned that parbatva venus will deliver worse effects and subatva venus will deliver benefits but if venus resides in the 8th house to the ascendant house with subatva what it happen the native will go abroad during the major planetary period of the venus because the 8th house has got subatva by the presence of the venus if saturn or rahu is very strong in the natal chart it will deliver bad effects like injuries when saturn or rahu is strong then it will deliver worse effects such as bleeding cuts and wounds whereas when benefic is strong which is a functional malefic then it delivers contused wounds it will deliver its effects through good ways therefore in any situation when venus resides in the house of libra it is good depending on which ascendant you are going to predict or depending on which house the house of libra is to the ascendant it will do the house effects when venus resides in the house of libra it is a great benefit in any good chart you can see both venus and jupiter will not be spoiled if both venus and jupiter are strong in the chart then it is very auspicious definitely the luminaries the sun and the moon should be strong in a natal chart it is very significant that the luminary planets should be strong in the natal chart and the next level importance is given to jupiter and venus finally you can try to check the other planets for the person in whose natal chart the luminaries are strong the life will be definitely lit by these luminaries having said this when venus resides in the house of libra alone then it is very auspicious because this is the seventh house of the natural zodiac and definitely venus should not be in conjunction with the sun if the venus is in conjunction with the sun then venus will attain shunya bala when venus is in conjunction with the sun the venus will transfer its own energy to the sun and the sun will become subatva and the venus will become parbatva venus will strengthen the sun by passing its strength of its own status and venus will lose its strength venus will make the sun subatva and venus will become parbatva let me ask a question now how much parbatva that venus will attain when it is in conjunction with the sun any idea venus will attain 50% parbatva because sun is 50% malefic planet when venus is in conjunction with the saturn then it is really worse when venus is in conjunction with saturn in the house of libra then venus will lose its own house status that is the strength of the own house status in today's win tv live program there was a question by a subscriber who is a lady 
and she had Saturn and Venus conjunction in the house of Libra. I told that she is undergoing a tough period since 2014, that is 2014, at which time the major planetary period of the Venus started. She nodded yes, yes, yes to all my predictions. I predicted from her natal chart that her husband would be helping his sisters and that would be the root cause for the problem in her family. She wondered and told me that I was predicting in such a way that I am witnessing her family events every day. It is very easy to make predictions like this because Venus is a female planet and the Venus is in conjunction with the Saturn in the house of Libra. If Venus is in conjunction with Saturn in the house of Libra, you have to check the gender of the native. If the native is female, then Venus signifies the husband. It to tell what the husband does. You can able to check whether the husband has some extramarital affairs or whether he helps his siblings, the sisters or whether he helps any other women. You can easily identify which sort of relationship the husband has with what type of women or is he having extramarital affairs. You can able to identify whether the husband has some counterfeit relationship, whether he is helping the sisters or whether he is helping the mother. When you know the house effects and the significance of the planet, you can easily make predictions spontaneously. During the Win TV channel live program, I answered the question of the very last viewer. I gave a detailed explanation over there for at least 5 minutes. The last viewer, the lady, was working as a higher government official. The lady was a native of Danush Ascendant, that is Sagittarius Ascendant, and both the house of Leo and the house lord Sun got Subhatva, and the lord of the ninth and tenth houses, that is Sun and Mercury, were in Parivartan, and Jupiter in the ascendant house was aspecting the house of Leo. Since the house of Leo, the sun got Subhatva, she was working as a higher official in the government. I said the major planetary period of the Venus would have been bad for her. Then she questioned me that she purchased a house during the major planetary period of Venus. She purchased a house in three years. What did Venus do? It should spoil the Jiva Karaka, that is the human relationship that it signifies and it will give the Ajiva Karaka, that is Jada Karaka. Whatever planet it is, when it is Pabatva, what it would do during the major planetary period? It will spoil the Jiva Karaka, that is Uir Karagam and it will give Ajiva Karaka, that is Jada Karaka. It will spoil the human relationship that the planet signifies and it will give the materialistic significance. In future, I will definitely publish a video regarding the significance of the planet, especially the Jiva Karaga and Ajiva Karaga of each science. If anyone wants to learn in-depth predictions, please watch the Win TV live program, which is Guruji's Neram, where I have responded to the very last viewer. If you watch my videos, definitely you will learn a lot. I did not get a chance to give detailed explanation for the natal charts on YouTube live program. And I usually rush while I give predictions on YouTube live. But in WinTV live program, you can see that I have shared a lot of intricate information regarding the prediction. Please watch that program if you are really interested to know the intricacies of astrology. I did not rush during the predictions in the WinTV live program, therefore it will be definitely helpful to you. 
The reason why I say here is in the natal chart of that lady, there was conjunction of Saturn and Venus in the 11th house and she is a native of Sagittarius ascendant. In any situation, Venus should not be in conjunction with the exalted Saturn. The Venus will lose all its good qualities because of the conjunction of Saturn. Though Saturn is a friendly planet, it is like a thief. Imagine the situation where um, you are going with your friend to the marketplace and uh, your friend is a thief or rogue. Then would anybody in the market respect you? Please think about it. The same situation will happen to Venus when it is in conjunction with Saturn. Therefore, in any situation, Venus can alone reside in the house of Libra or it can be in conjunction with Mercury. When Venus resides in the house of Libra in conjunction with the Sun, it will lose only its strength because the Sun is 50% malefic. When Venus is in conjunction with Saturn, then the Venus will become Pabatva and it will make the Saturn Subhatva by its energy. Therefore, the major planetary period of Saturn will be good and the major planetary period of the Venus will be bad. When Venus is in conjunction with Jupiter, you have to take into account the difference, that is the degrees of conjunction and to which ascendant you are going to predict. I have explained a lot about the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus and I believe we have even given 250 charts for this conjunction of Venus and Jupiter. Based on which ascendant you are, you have to make predictions. When Venus and Jupiter are in close conjunction, it will spoil either progeny or the marital pleasure. When Venus and Jupiter are in close degrees of conjunction, this will definitely happen. And therefore, you should not predict as Venus is in conjunction with Jupiter, it is going to be more auspicious. But this won't be the case since Jupiter has the contrasting nature to Venus. Therefore, when Jupiter and Venus are in conjunction in Libra, you have to check which house is this to the ascendant and during the major planetary period of one planet among the two, it will deliver bad effects and based on the ascendant, you have to predict which planet's major planetary period would be bad and also based on the bhava, you have to make predictions. Therefore, Venus can reside in Libra. It is very auspicious, but it should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. It can be in conjunction with the other benefits. If Venus is in conjunction with the Sun, Venus will lose only 50% of its strength since Sun is 50% malefic. What would happen when Venus is in conjunction with the Moon? To predict this, you have to definitely understand the strength of the light energy of the Moon. During the month of Kartigai, if it is Amavasya Moon and if it is in conjunction with Venus, then the moon will become Subhatva. The moon can get rid of its dark energy. In contrary, the Venus will become Pabhatva. This prediction will be exactly correct and 100% valid. What would happen when there is such a planetary position of Venus and moon? During the major planetary period of Venus, it will be bad and during the major planetary period of the moon, it will be good. When you understand the Subhatva and Pabhatva of a planet, you can clearly predict what would happen during the major planetary period 
or minor planetary period of the planet. That is dasha or antar dasha of the planet. I used to address the moon as another Saturn when it is heading towards Amavasya. You can predict the moon the same way as you predict for Saturn. Let us imagine that it is the month of Kartigai and the moon is in conjunction with Venus in the house of Libra. Whatever the ascendant is, when the major planetary period of the moon happens, the moon will not have Amavasya Dosha because the moon borrows the light energy from the Venus. Therefore, the major planetary period of the moon will deliver benefits. When Venus is in conjunction with Amavasya moon, Venus lends its energy, the light energy to the moon and Venus becomes Pabatva. Therefore, the major planetary period of the Venus will not be good and in order to predict more that what would happen during the major planetary period of the Venus, you have to check which house is this, that is the Libra house to the ascendant. When Venus is in conjunction with Amavasya moon in the house of Libra, the house becomes Pabatva and you have to check which house is this to the ascendant. Well, now let me explain the effects of the next planet, Saturn in the house of Libra. Saturn will get exalted in the house of Libra. I always say that a malefic such as Saturn should not get exalted. It should gain strength indirectly. The Saturn gets exalted in the house of Libra and when Saturn is retrograde in the house of Libra and the house of Libra is the quadrant house to the ascendant, then Saturn will get sukshma strength. When Saturn gets exalted in the sixth house or eighth house to the ascendant, it is good. For example, let us say that the person is native of Taurus ascendant, that is Rishab ascendant, then the Saturn will be exalted in the sixth house, it is good. When Saturn gets exalted in the 6th house, 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant, it is good. Because when Saturn gets exalted in the 6th house for Taurus ascendant, it gets sukshma strength. The concept is, please listen, this is really important. The concept is when a malefic gets exalted in the 6th house, 8th house or the 12th house, then it gains sukshma strength. When Saturn is in conjunction with Ketu, it is good. When Saturn is in conjunction with Venus, the Saturn will get Subhatva and it will spoil the strength of the Venus. If Saturn is in conjunction with Jupiter, then the major planetary period of Saturn will be excellent and the major planetary period of Jupiter will be worse. This is the way you have to predict the effects of the planet Saturn when it resides in the house of Libra. And more importantly, Saturn should not be in conjunction with the Sun. When Saturn is in conjunction with the Sun, which is debilitated in the house of Libra, then Saturn will make the debilitated planet Pabatva. Therefore, when Saturn gets exalted in the quadrant house and if it is retrograde, then it gains Sukshma strength. For the native of Aries ascendant, when Saturn resides in the house of Libra, it is seventh house to the Aries and if it is retrograde, then it gets Sukshma strength. Consequently, the Saturn gets weakened and the Saturn will deliver a contrasting effect. If Saturn is not retrograde, then it should be in the 6th house, 8th house or in the 12th house for the native of Rishabh, ascendant that is Taurus ascendant. This is the reason why Saturn is in the 6th house 
to the native of Taurus ascendant and gets exalted in the house of Libra. For the native of Taurus ascendant, Saturn is the Raja Yoga Dipati, that is, he is the house lord of the 9th house and the 10th house, a trine and a quadrant house. Please try to understand the concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva, gaining strength directly, gaining strength indirectly, and Sukshma strength, etc. It needs little effort to understand all these and it is going to be very helpful to make accurate predictions. When Saturn resides in the house of Libra, please try to understand the significance of the planet, the Bhava and the house effects. If Saturn is in the quadrant house, it should be in the retrograde in order to gain the Sukshma strength. Otherwise, if it has direct strength, then it should be in the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house to the ascendant. In this case, the Saturn gains Sukshma strength. If you are confused, please listen to this video again and again. Definitely you will understand the concept. When Saturn is in conjunction with Ketu, it gains Sukshma strength. When Saturn is in conjunction with Venus, then it is good for Saturn and when Saturn is in conjunction with Jupiter, again in this case Saturn gets Subhatva. The Saturn should not be in conjunction with the Sun. When Saturn is in conjunction with the Moon, it spoils the status of the Mother completely. For example, let us take during the month of Kartigai. The Moon is almost the Amavasya Moon in the house of Libra. And when the moon is in conjunction with the Saturn, then this conjunction completely spoils the status of the mother. The mother will be either no more or the mother will not behave as a mother though she is alive. The major planetary period of both Saturn and the moon will spoil the status of the mother. It is like two Saturns sitting in one house which spoils the marital pleasure as well. This is the Libra sign, therefore when Saturn resides in the house of Libra, it affects love, relationship and marital pleasure. It will spoil the status of the house. A male cannot understand a woman at all. When Amavasya moon and Saturn are in conjunction, then the person will be denied the carnal pleasure. When the Saturn and Amavasya moon is in conjunction, a man will be afraid to move with women. First of all, the person will not have any inclination to search for a woman. A woman will degrade a man to the worst extent that he does not have enough emotional intelligence to understand a woman. A woman is very elegant. What should a spouse expect from his man? She might expect her husband to take her to the cinema for a night show, to get her some delicacies, to get her a lot of jasmine flowers to wear. If a man appreciates in a single phrase that the dish prepared by his spouse, that is the wife, is good, it will bring immense pleasure in the mind of the wife. If you appreciate the spouse that she has prepared a dish very well, out of excitement, your wife would not be able to sleep. Your wife will recall the words told by you and cherish the moment. The next day she will try to prepare a better one. Because the ultimate goal of a woman is to serve her husband. You know why I say all these points? It is to understand the mind of a woman and of course the effect of the planet conjunction. When the house of Libra is Pabhatva, then you will not be able to understand a woman at all. In this situation, the person will be someone who will not be loved by women at all. When Saturn is Pabhatva and is in conjunction with the Amavasya moon in the house of Libra, it will spoil the house of Libra as well. When Saturn is in conjunction with the Amavasya moon, it will spoil 
the status of the mother and it will also spoil one's own mind because the moon is the significator of the mind. Therefore, when Saturn is in conjunction with the Amavasya moon, then the mind of the person will be spoiled. When Saturn is in conjunction with the Amavasya moon, then it says that the native will not have a mother or if the mother exists, then the mother will not behave like a mother at all. The mind will not be in good status as well because the planet that signifies the mother and the mind is spoiled when it has no light energy and moreover in conjunction with the Saturn. Therefore, it is like two big malefics residing in one house and spoiling the seventh house of the natural zodiac which signifies the marital pressure. The native will not be interested in marital pleasure or they will not be able to find a pair to fulfill their desire. I give a lot of choices of predictions because merely based on one point you cannot make a conclusion. To make a complete prediction you have to check the lord of the seventh house and then check the third house, the seventh house and the twelfth house which are called as the houses of pleasure. And then you have to check the status of the Venus. The moon which has lost its light energy and the Saturn should not be in conjunction in the house of Libra. During the month of Ipasi, that is during the month of Ashwin, the sun would be already in the loss of light energy when it resides in the house of Libra. Therefore, the Saturn should not be also in conjunction with the Sun in the house of Libra. When Saturn is in conjunction with Mercury, it will make the Mercury Pabatva and the Saturn will gain strength. The Mars and the Saturn should not be in conjunction here. Let me put forward a question now. Why Mars and Saturn should not be in conjunction in the house of Libra? Because two big malefics will be in the house of Libra which will spoil the house since the Libra sign is such a sensitive sign in the natural zodiac the two malefics such as Mars and Saturn should not sit in the same house in the house of Libra. It is the house of pleasure and signifies the spouse therefore in the house of Libra the malefic should not be in conjunction. The Saturn and Rahu should never be in conjunction in the house of Libra. I mentioned another combination that when Rahu and Saturn is in conjunction in the house of Leo, it will spoil the status of the father. What would happen when Saturn and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Libra? When Saturn and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Libra, then it will spoil the house of Libra. A man will not have a wife and a woman will not have a husband. The prediction is very simple. Therefore here, when this house is spoiled, the man will be beaten up by the wife. This is what would happen if the house is spoiled. There might be another case, the person might not have a wife at all. When all these bad effects would take place, the major planetary period of Saturn or Rahu will deliver such worse effects. If the person does not go through the major planetary period of Rahu or Saturn, then these effects will not happen at all. Therefore, the Saturn and Rahu should not be in conjunction in the house of Libra. Let us see the next combination, the Saturn and Ketu. This combination is really good because the Saturn gets Sukshuma strength here when Ketu is in conjunction with the Saturn. When Ketu is in conjunction with the exalted Saturn in the house of Libra, then the person will be extremely spiritual. 
when Ketu and Saturn are in conjunction with the moon as well in the house of Libra and aspected by Jupiter, then the person is almost equal to Almighty. When Ketu is in conjunction with the exalted Saturn and when Saturn gets additional Subhatva and when Rashi and Ascendant both get the connection of Jupiter, Ketu and Saturn, then the person will get the highest level of spirituality. This is such a favorable planetary combination and position to attain the highest level of spiritualism and the person will be truly spiritual. Therefore, the conjunction of Saturn and Ketu is good. The next planet that I am going to explain is Rahu. I have explained about Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars and now it is Rahu. When Rahu is in the house of Libra, of course it is not good, but it is an auspicious house for Rahu. This is the house of a natural benefic. The auspicious house for Rahu are Mesham, Rishabham, Kadagam, Kanni and Magaram. That is Aries, Taurus, Cancer, Virgo and Capricorn. When Rahu is in the fixed house of a natural benefic, which is Taurus, then it is considered to be very auspicious. Please try to understand a common statement regarding Rahu. When Rahu resides in the houses, right from Aries until Virgo, then Rahu will deliver benefits. The houses right from Aries to Virgo are the shadow of the North Node. The houses right from Libra to Pisces is the shadow of the southern node. I have mentioned that when Ketu resides in the houses Scorpio and Aquarius, it will deliver benefits. Please observe this point. I said so because the Ketu here represents the shadow of the southern node. Having said this, when Rahu resides in the house of Libra, it is not good. When Ketu resides in Libra, Ketu will deliver benefits. Since this is the house of Venus, Rahu will not deliver very worse effects. If the house of Libra where the Rahu resides becomes a trine or quadrant to the ascendant and in addition to this, when the house gets aspected by Jupiter as well, then Rahu spoils the house first where it resides and then it will deliver the benefits. When Rahu resides in the house from Aries to Virgo, it will deliver benefits and the house of Capricorn is an exception where when Rahu resides will deliver benefits. I have explained the reason for the exception and I have also explained how Rahu delivers benefits while it is in the house of Aries, Taurus, Virgo, Cancer and Capricorn. I have explained all these intricacies in the article titled Intricacies of Rahu and also in few chapters of my book Jodhidam Yennum Deva Ragasiyam. Those who can buy the book, please buy the book and learn it. Otherwise, you can also read the articles published in my website where anybody can access it free of cost. You can find the article on my website, Facebook, or in the premier membership app videos. And there are certain videos in the YouTube also regarding the same. Therefore, when Rahu resides in the house of Libra as Subhatva, then it will spoil the pleasure, the house effects of the Libra, and then it will deliver the benefits. In addition to this, when Rahu is in conjunction with Venus, might be 8 degrees, 13 degrees or 22 degrees. Based on the degrees of conjunction, it will deliver benefits. And when it gets the Jupiter connection, it will deliver more benefits during its major planetary period. Try to understand the very basic concept. When Rahu resides in the house of a benefic and when it is in conjunction with the benefic, it will definitely deliver benefits. 
when this house that is where the rahu resides becomes the house of aries taurus cancer virgo and capricorn that is mesh rishabh kark kanya and makar it will do additional benefits when rahu resides in the house of libra of course it resides in the house of a benefic yet if this house is the seventh house to the ascendant it will spoil the status of the wife and if it is fourth house to the ascendant it will spoil the status of the mother if rahu resides in the fifth house it will spoil the progeny this will give putra dosha this is how you have to predict the presence of rahu when rahu resides in the house of libra it should not get connected to mars or to saturn i would even say wherever rahu resides it should not get the connection of saturn or mars because it will definitely spoil the house very badly where it resides when rahu resides in the house of mars and is in connection with saturn or when it resides in the house of saturn and is in connection with mars or when it is in conjunction with both the planets or any connection with mars and saturn it is not good at all when rahu resides in the house of libra which is a house of natural benefic of course it is good when rahu resides in the house of libra if it gets aspected by jupiter then it is more auspicious when ketu resides in the house of libra of course it is good when ketu resides in the house of libra and when venus gets exalted then ketu will deliver lots of money when ketu resides in the house of libra and venus has a very good strength like own house status or gets exalted then ketu will deliver benefits the major planetary period of ketu is just 7 years and like rahu which is very long therefore during these 7 years the ketu will deliver lots of money therefore when ketu resides in the house of libra it is good whatever predictions i mentioned for rahu will apply for ketu as well let me repeat the points ketu should not get connected with mars or saturn when rahu or ketu resides in the house check which house it is to the ascendant you have to definitely predict based on which ascendant rahu or ketu is going to work the next step is to see whether this house is the third house or 11th house to the ascendant see whether the venus is functional malefic or benefic to the ascendant and the next step is to check the strength of the dispositor of the house of libra that is venus if the dispositor venus is exalted definitely the rahu or ketu will not spoil the concept is the dispositor of the house where the rahu or ketu resides should be exalted despite whether it is being malefic or benefic if the dispositor is a natural benefic then it has additional benefits ketu is a planet that grows the house effects when the house of libra is the seventh house to the ascendant it will not spoil the status of the wife it will not spoil the pleasures as well ketu does not tend to spoil the house where it resides rahu is the planet which spoils the house where it resides you might ask that in certain uh, original dictums both ketu and rahu will spoil the house where it resides and then delivers benefits it is not correct please do not believe certain hearsays i would always suggest that you have to do some research regarding the statements please try to apply the rule in the natal charts that you know and you will definitely realize that what i say is 100% correct 
Unlike Rahu, Ketu is not such an arrogant planet. I have explained the intricacies based on the concepts of eclipse in few of my articles. Therefore, in brief, when Ketu resides in the house of Libra, it is good. You have to make further predictions based on which house is to the ascendant. Now, this is question time. Is Capricorn an auspicious house for Rahu or not? Let me repeat the question. Is the house of Capricorn considered to be an auspicious house for Rahu? Please write your answer in the comment section of this video. The link of the Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box and write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.